Hi everyone, please support our videos on Patreon. The link's at the end of the video and in the down there part. Thank you, you're lovely. Slide in, almost trip, make an awkward attempt to naturally segue into the topic as if I'm speaking to people face to face, make a snarky dig at fandom, reference one of the five pieces of media I've been milking for the last year because I've lost the passion for my job and I'm spinning my wheels until my bigger projects are done, and fade into the interlude. Okay, so I fucking love the Harley Quinn show. After me and Michaela were orbiting around it for a while through the Eat Bang Kill tour, I finally decided to just give it a watch one day when I was bored and laying in bed and thinking about the sheer dread of being a terminally stalked and harassed content creator who people will always take stabs at for sadistic glee no matter how much time has passed. <laughs> And you know what? It was quite good. I dare say it's probably the best thing to come out of the Batman franchise in a long time, though Eat Bang Kill is still better. I, I don't have a through line, I'm just gonna gush. Let's not mince words, I mean, if you're watching this show at all, you're watching it for the romantic arc between Harley and Ivy. Don't lie. I know you were. It's the main thing that was advertised, it's what the tie-in comic is entirely devoted to, and it's pretty much the only thing people actually seem to remember about it, and that's understandable. I mean, it's a post-Joker Harley Quinn story, what else are they gonna do? Admittedly, I held off on watching this because I'd been burned on the promise of sapphic romance before, and unlike my wife, I only need to be burned once. You know me, I won't even look at a show's LGBT rep until they actually have it, and not just say they're going to have it. So I didn't check out the show until clips from the third season of Harley and Ivy being adorably sapphic started coming out, and I was like, yeah, alright, I'll give that a look. And the whole show was fucking amazing. This is the first time in a long time I've ever been interested in anything to do with Batman. After the entire franchise went grim, dark, and edgy, it's long been the single most miserable pile of shit in the goddamn world. But this? Oh, this is beautiful. So let's start with the selling point. Harley and Ivy have a really good arc from season to season. In season one, they're friends while Harley struggles to get over the Joker. In season two, Harley realizes she's in love with Ivy, all the while Ivy is about to get married to Kite Man. In season three, they're together and just being the most sapphic couple ever. I thought I would find the first two seasons a slog, but it's actually very well paced. In the first season, Harley's struggling to get over the Joker. Joker actually leaves her for dead in the first episode, and despite being broken out of jail by Ivy, she rushes right back to him, only to get betrayed again. Though she claims to be done with him, toward the end of the season, she relapses a third time and is betrayed almost immediately. Good job. And that's the point where the lesson is finally driven into her skull that she needs to be done with this clown. The interesting part of this, however, is that by the time of the third relapse, her friends are actually furious with her, like they've spent all this time trying to help her get away, and she keeps running back to him. Ivy, you, you gotta understand! No, not this time, Harley. I have done everything in my power to keep you away from that ass clown, because I truly believe that you deserve better. But you know what? I am done believing in someone who just doesn't believe in herself. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I have, I made a mistake. I know I did. It won't happen again. Bullshit. Poppycock. It's something that isn't touched upon very much. People who have a tendency to rush back to their abuser are often doing so at the expense of the time, patience, and emotional labor of the people who actually love them. And you can't really help someone who refuses to help themselves. I think it's a very good wake-up call for Harley to learn who actually matters to her. It might seem cruel to some people, but at the end of the day, you can't help people to your own detriment. It's something I've experienced myself. I've ended at least two friendships over the fact that the people involved were content to put themselves in bad situations and constantly worrying about them was starting to affect my own health. So I feel very seen by Ivy here, who has just had enough. It doesn't stay that way very long. A few episodes later, Harley comes to Ivy's rescue and things are good between them again, but the fact that Harley abandoned her when she needed help stays with Ivy throughout the second season, while her relationship with Kite Man gets more serious and Harley starts to realize that she's in love with her. Harley's determined to be a better friend at first, but as the chaos in Gotham ramps up, she realizes that she doesn't just want to be a good friend to Ivy. She wants to be with her. She even gives up the chance to rule the world because it's not what she actually wants and confesses her feelings immediately after. After. But Ivy turns her down because she's afraid of getting her heart broken. At this point, Harley just kind of gives up and resolves to be the best friend she can. Until she gets a pep talk about not giving up on Ivy from the Joker of all people. I mean, I don't want to biff it like you did. Hey, I told Ivy how I felt and she didn't feel that way. End of story! Water under the bridge! Right, right! The screaming about it at the mere mention of her name certainly backs that up. Now it's your turn. I told you I tried. It didn't work. Ivy said no. Are you prepared to live with that? I'm prepared for anything. 
I'm gonna have more to say on the Joker in a bit. This, however, doesn't last, as a combination of Kite Man finding out Ivy cheated on him with Harley, and ending their relationship after seeing how Ivy's heart wasn't in their vows, causes Ivy to realize that Harley has actually been there for her the entire time, and they get together. In Season 3, the two of them are the most saccharine motherfuckers in the world, and their relationship is actually very stable. Though they do argue at times, at no point is the prospect of them breaking up for the drama ever presented. There's one point where Ivy has to choose between her dream of terraforming the planet and saving Harley, who's accidentally, but not really, turning into a tree zombie, and Ivy only agonizes over it for a minute before choosing Harley. It's clear the two of them aren't breaking up anytime soon. They love each other far too much, and despite whatever difficulties might arise, it's clear their relationship ultimately makes them both happy. This is great. I love a good fluffy romance. I'm so fucking done with people's obsession with the nasty stuff. I just want to see two supervillains adoring the shit out of each other while they plot world domination. Okay, that's cool, Lily, but what do you think about Harley Quinn as a character? I'll tell you what, Ivy's probably at her best in this show. Poison Ivy has always had the same problem a lot of female characters in DC Comics have, in that despite being an actual doctor, they always just put her in a skin-tight leotard and have her strut around the room like a supermodel. About the only notable exception to that was in The Batman, where she was a teenager and also voiced by Sylvanas Windrunner for some reason. Just a fad makeover. Green is the new red. And I'm gonna use my powers to avenge crimes against nature. We can do it together, Red. The two of us. And I'm betting Chlorogene will listen to me this time. But here! Oh my god, she's the coolest damn character in the whole show. She's got kind of a Futch vibe here, which I really respect, and that jacket just... Oh my god. You also get to see her doing actual science as she experiments with her Eden serum to terraform the planet. Like they actually remembered that Ivy's a biologist and not just a druid with a narc on. Isn't that neat? Ivy also has an arc about actually letting people in rather than going completely solo. Initially, she doesn't want to join Harley's crew because she works alone, but over the course of the first season, she comes to love all of them, except for Dr. Psycho Obs. And in season three, there's an arc where Frank gets kidnapped by Batman and Ivy spends multiple episodes trying to find him and failing and ultimately breaking down in front of Swamp Thing about it. In this house, we love one one bastard plant. Okay, Lil, but what about Harley? And you know, I never expected a nothing character like Clayface to be so charming. Clayface was always like a random D-list monster like Carnage, but here he's reimagined as a struggling actor, constantly making new characters to assume and being the ham to go with the cheese that is the romance in this show. There's one episode where he assumes the identity of Stephanie to sneak into Riddler's college, and she completely and utterly steals the show. Clayface shouldn't go, but your boo. <laughs> Stephanie is mad stoked to hook up with you on the quad. It is I, Stephanie, a fun yet bookish transfer student from Chico State. Yeah, Stephanie's not going either. <laughs> Why does he want to rush to label it? How long did he give you to decide? Just the weekend, and I'm auditioning for Garrett's acapella group. Ugh, that's still the cool one, right? Holy shit, how'd you get that? It pays to be Chad's almost girlfriend. I can't believe Chad set me up. <laughs> I broke my purity ring for him! Seriously, I'm convinced that he's been moonlighting as Stephanie a lot. The other girls on campus call her Steph. She's been there for a while. This is Clayface's secret identity and you can't convince me otherwise. And King Shark gets less focus in the show, but he is just an absolute sweetheart. Reminds me of one of my IRL friends that I love so huggy muggy much. There's one scene where he offers to kill the zombie Wayne so Bruce doesn't have to after having a heart to heart talk with him about trauma. It's very sweet. Okay, but what about Harley? Don't get me started on Catwoman. I'm way too bi for the show, I fucking swear. Catwoman's the smooth talk thief who reads everyone for filth and negs the crap out of Batman, I think that's just great. Also, she eats Cheetos in the bath, which is not something I expected from someone who lives in a mansion, but I love it. Also, she has a mansion filled with treasures and jewels, but doesn't have ad block. What a disaster woman. I love her so fucking much. Actually, come to think of it, Batman's really good in this too. They leaned into the fact that someone with a history like Bruce Wayne would be kind of sad and pathetic. He's clearly using his relationship with Selina as a way to avoid having to go to therapy and dodge the crippling loneliness he feels, which makes him kind of a doormat, especially given that Selina isn't all that into this relationship in the first place. After the relationship ends, he pivots to capturing Frank in order to use the Eden Serum to raise his parents from the dead. Yes, you heard that right. He's raising his parents parents from the dead. Spoiler, it doesn't work. Like, the writer thought, okay, what do we use to fill our quota of the sad, misguided villain this arc? Oh, I know, fucking Batman. That's actually perfect. He actually has a conversation with King Shark about his trauma, which is both funny and really sweet. I love Bruce in this show. I especially love when he gets sent to prison for tax evasion in the season three finale. I want him to get some nice and comfortable therapy, maybe with a psychiatrist.
psychiatrist who's actually licensed, though. Lily, what about Harley? Can you believe out of all the characters to pull out of the pit of mediocrity that Frank Miller had shoved them into for years, that the Joker would be one of them? First of all, in season one, he's back to being a deliciously nasty villain, but in season two and three, he graduates to being a stepdad to a woman named Bethany and having an arch rivalry with a Karen at his stepkid's PTA. And is that an ethnic dish, or...? It sure is ethnic. Speaking of racist... Oh, I'll file a fucking complaint! Oh my god, there were bones in this. Did you have the chorizo dream? No, she didn't try to cut off my penis and serve it at a book fair again. No, 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 no not your brother, please. Because he smokes and Sophia has asthma, that's why. Lots of dads are serial killers. It's kind of like WandaVision, but instead of a traumatized woman who will be inevitably villainized by the very next douchebag to write for her, it's the Joker plotting devious schemes to destroy Karen. I never expected the Joker runs for mayor just to steal Karen's parking spot to be something he would do, but on reflection, it's something he would definitely do and succeed at. It's a return to wacky hijinks that used to define the Joker way back when he was just a gangster with funny makeup, and then going, hey, what if he was a stepdad? Wouldn't that be fucking wild? Also, he has a sitcom opening that just skewers every shitty interpretation of this character that came before. The other supervillains that stick around are a riot, like Bane's characterized as just a pathetic fucking loser the entire show, a heel that nobody wants to deal with. Mr. Freeze has the best episode before he fucking dies and then his cured wife is let out of the ice block to live her life. Penguin isn't around very long before he gets killed off, but personally, I think that's a good thing. Penguin always rubbed me the wrong way, I'm not sure why. Lily, talk about Harley! Oh, for crying out loud, I don't like Harley! <laughs> I like the potential Harley has as a character. It's the same way I've felt about a lot of characters in the past. But the problem is, while every other character gets to do cool new things and explore new dimensions of themselves, Harley is the lone exception. What are the two stories that you always associate with Harley Quinn? And what do they do with Harley in this show? Starting to see the problem? Part of why this show is so much fun is that they take all these characters that have been stagnating for years and do cool and new things with them. Even Mr. Freeze, who has become literally the sweetest man in the goddamn world. But Harley continues to go through the same story she always goes through. And once Joker's out of the picture and she's hooked up with Ivy, the show has literally nothing left for her to do outside of play sidekick to Ivy's plan to create Eden. About the only real improvement they made uh, to the character was getting away from Tara Strong's best impression of Mort Goldman and just giving her a new voice actress. And you know what? Kaylee Cuoco does a very good job as the voice of Harley. She's great. But this is about the only interesting thing they do with Harley, and even calling that interesting is a stretch. Despite being the titular character, Harley gets the least real focus outside of the same two stories that were already pretty much pre-written. It's kind of like how the Spider-Man adaptations always had to carry the burden of needing to adapt Uncle Ben and Peter being borderline homeless and poverty stricken. And the first time a Spider-Man film tried to get away from that stifling mire, guess who started complaining? Ugh, get a room and some self-esteem. Are they just not allowed to do anything with Harley or did they just not care? She had a small arc about wanting to take over Gotham in season two, even axing the other supervillains one by one, but she gives that up in favor of trying to be with Ivy. Even as far as season three, she's still hung up on trying to stick it to the Joker. Harley just doesn't really do anything new and that makes her the weakest element of the show. I think comic book adaptations are at their worst when they're soullessly just going through the established motions. It's why Batman movies sucked for so long. Because none of the people making them had any interest in the character outside of darkness, edgy, brutal men, which has been a mire the character's been stuck in for quite some time. All the Batman characters are stuck in a stagnating swamp of fanboy expectations, but in this show at least, they manage to get out of it and learn how to be fun again. But Harley is still stuck in that swamp. I just want them to do something else with her. I think the show should have started with Harley and Ivy already together because then it would have forced the writers to actually have a new idea for the character whose name is in the fucking title. Let's kill the bozo! Harley Quinn as a standalone villain never made sense. She doesn't have a villainous goal. She doesn't want anything. She was ultimately a henchman, but her solo act has always been lacking in motivation. Ivy has a reason to be a villain. She has a real goal in mind. She does evil to achieve something. But Harley has only ever been a villain because the people she's dating are villains. Hell, she had a conventional job that she was actually good at and threw it away because of bog-standard fangirl hybristophilia. And that's an element of her character that never really went away, and that would be interesting to unpack. I mean, she ultimately jumped from one supervillain who treated her like shit to another supervillain who just happens to not. In season one, she just wanted to join the Legion of Doom to be taken seriously as a villain, which she never is and ultimately gives up on. After that... 
Not much. Toward the end of season three, even she has a crisis about whether she's evil or not, but in the end, all she really does is fill in for Batman while he's in prison, once again playing second fiddle to other people. Even Eat Bang Kill was more focused on Ivy than Harley. This is a problem company-wide. Even when they bring in very good writers, Harley is just stuck in the same place. So far, she's been moving around between storylines, never really committing to anything, and ultimately ending up right back where her character started, as the henchwoman to a villain slash Batgirl who's actually carrying some fucking cards. And I wouldn't mind that if they would just stick to it. I don't object to a character stepping back and deciding their role is going to be Bonk Goon's kiss wife. Fuck, I've written characters like that. Being a supporting character isn't bad. Being a nurturing character isn't bad. But I know for a fact that the next time we see Harley after this show ends, it's going to hit the reset and she's going to go through this exact character arc all over again, because that's just what comic book adaptations are now. Constantly retreading the same story and never bothering to do anything else and never committing to anything for very long. The MCU tried to do something new with Peter Parker, get away from the established formula and asshole fanboys bitched and moaned incessantly because he wasn't street anymore, to the point that they hit the reset and put him right back into the misery porn that Peter's been stuck in for a long time, and overall the character's been poorer for it, lost most of his identity, and just became another Spider-Man for the pile. I don't know how you fix it without just committing to something. If you want Harley to be Ivy's supporting character, fine, but you better not hit the reset button just to do it again later on. Just stick to it. It's fine. But it's not fine every time they start over and pretend it's a bold new step for the character. That's why DC properties are so fucking boring. They're just recycling the same few interpretations of the characters that are kinda bad. Like, Batman is an interesting character, but you wouldn't know that if you only watch the theatrical films, because the theatrical films are only pulling from the same four comic books that also happen to be the edgiest, and two of them are fucking satires in the first place. So we have comics that say Batman shouldn't be like this, and fuck Fuck off, Joker, you're not a fucking victim, enough with the rhetoric, and you end up getting films that completely miss the point of them because they just wanted to write edgelord fanfiction. And these one-dimensional versions of these characters are something the fanbase not only tolerates, but applauds. There's a scene from Justice League Unlimited that people pass around to demonstrate what Batman should be like. You've probably seen it. It's the scene where Batman comforts Ace as she's dying. It's the scene every single person complaining about modern Batman cites. But you ever notice that they only ever cite this one scene? That's because it's really hard to find Batman moments like this. They don't let him be this way very much because the fan base only wants psycho thug Batman. They're the same group of people that wants cartoons to be grittier and more adult, but Warner Brothers made the critical mistake of actually listening to those fucking clowns. That's where we are with Harley because part of the reason why her only stories are Joker's girlfriend, Joker's victim, and Ivy's girlfriend is because by and large the audience only wants those three stories, and the few times they actually do something different, the audience turns up their nose immediately. As as it stands, Harley is DC's own Banshee Queen. She's stuck in this rut with a fanbase that, for the most part, doesn't want her to move anywhere, and the potential the character has is squandered by everybody, creator and fan alike. Harley Quinn is a great show, but it's not because of Harley herself. Season 1 has Harley dealing with who she is, and by the end of Season 3, she still hasn't answered that question. The romance is really good, and all the other characters are really good, but Harley's actual character arc is decidedly undercooked. Is that everything? I think that's everything. Everything that matters anyway. Oh yeah, McKay has a video on the Eat Bang Kill comics and T. Franklin's other comic, Bingo Love. You should go watch those, they're really good. You know she's friends with T. Franklin? That's wild. My wife is so fucking cool, and all their friends are cool. Like, how did I do that? How did I land such an absolutely gorgeous, talented, and successful woman? How did I do that? The partner I had before her was a walking nightmare on stilts that tortured me for fun. How did I make such a transit- Wait a minute, am I Harley? <laughs> <laughs>